Uh, th there's a charge ring of linear charge density lambda one, and we have a semi infinite line charge. What is the question? Find the force of interaction between the ring and the semi infinite rod. The force of interaction is asking. So one end of the rod is at center of the ring, the other end is at infinity, and the rod lies along the axis of the ring. You can see this. So what is this one? This, this particular point is an, in fact, an axis. It is. Okay. No. So let me write it here. Yeah. So where the rod, the rod is lying along the axis of ring. So what is a method like? What is a method? So what we do is like. So what we can do is like, I'll assume a small element dq, small elemental length on the rod. Then I'll find out first force on that small element. Then I'll integrate x equal to zero to infinity. I'll get the total force acting on the rod. Force on line charge by ring. So what is the method? I'll assume a small element dq2. Then what is the electric field strength on the axis given by formula k q1 r square x square to the power of three byte? I think you know this formula. Into what is the dq lambda two into dx? Length of this element is how much? Is in fact equal to lambda two into dx. So integrating, okay, we'll get it. So say so some integration is what we have to take care of here. The problem can be solved, no, 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 no doubt, but you should be very good in integration. Integration idea is needed. Can I avoid this? Yes, I do have another alternative. So what I assume is like a, this is line charge. How do you tell produce field? So there are two components, no? One E parallel. What is E parallel? Component of E bar parallel to the rod, and and this is in fact a ring, and other component will be perpendicular to the rod. How the parallel component? Everywhere the parallel component will be perpendicular to the plane of the ring. You can see from here, and we know magnitude of E parallel <laughs> E perpendicular due to semi infinite line charge lambda two by four pi epsilon naught. So what I do is like in a very simplified way. Uh, do, what, what, what about the perpendicular component? Due to perpendicular component, the net force should be zero. Only due to parallel component, the ring is going to experience a force. There's a ring in fact. Getting this one. Okay, now how to calculate that one? So what we do is like, due to E perpendicular, the net force on the ring will be zero. Due to E perpendicular, the net force, the force you write it, the force on the ring is zero. So what all the force will be due to E parallel? So what I do is like I'll assume a, what is the total charge on the ring? So lambda one equal to Q one by 2 pi r or total charge on the ring. So what is the total charge on the ring? Lambda 1 into 2 pi r. Then what is the e parallel? Lambda 2 by 4 pi f naught. Solving this will get the answer. So how you are writing? What is the total charge? Because at all points, the e parallel, at all points on the ring, what is the magnitude of e parallel? Will be same. At all points on the ring, the magnitude of E parallel will be the same. So therefore, charge into the electrostatic field, component of field. 
Uh, there are two approaches. One, the mathematics by using the integration. Other is by assuming the ring in the field of line charge. So here, what is the first approach? The first approach is we are assuming line charge present in the field of the ring. This is what this one. What about here? The ring is present in the field of line charge. This what here. Uh, which will be much easier, I think, the second method. Uh, this will be our answer. Huh? 